saints of God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm asking you to wake up. You better realize how real it's getting. With all the things going on on the earth right now, you need to be in your word. You need to live a life of prayer. You need to fast often. You need to get right with the Lord. This video right here is very important. I'm asking you to help spread it. As you know, this is a very important time for the occult. For those in the darkness, you have Halloween. There's a lot of evil that goes on in the enemy's camp during this season. And if you've been paying attention on social media like Facebook, you've been noticing a lot of ads for missing children and Amber Alerts going on on your phone. This happens every year because they have human sacrifice going on all over the place. From low-ranking witches to high-ranking Illuminati Luciferians, it is not a game. And what's so sad is soldiers online got to make YouTube videos every single year warning lukewarm Christians not to participate in this wickedness. But I'm going a different route this year. Please stick around because we're going to do a serious prayer at the end of this video. Now I want to keep this video as short as po I want to keep this video as short as possible. I'm not going to get into two depths with certain things because I need to take the time to show you what's hidden in the darkness. The word of God says, Jesus Christ will reveal the things hidden in the darkness. And you know by now that's one of the gifts that he has given us in this ministry is the revelations of Jesus Christ and also the light of Christ to expose the things hidden in the darkness that Satan don't want you knowing. And once again, Jesus Christ has been faithful. Now, there might be some of you who don't believe in the Ouija board. You might say, man, it's just a board game. It has no power. It's all in your head. But millions of people do. And there have been thousands upon thousands of cases of people that have literally opened up gateways through this satanic board, which is more than what you think it is. Now, as every video we do, the word of God has to be the foundation. If you go to Joshua chapter 7. I'm not going to read the whole chapter with you. But I want you to see this. Joshua chapter 7. Look at what it says. Verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. You understand? So there was a man named Achan. Who had a cursed objects, silver and gold that he stole from one of the enemies that they overcame. And God warned Joshua and the rest of Israel, do not touch those things because they're cursed. They're offered up to demon gods, false gods. But remember, we can say false gods, but they're still attached to demons and principalities. So what happened? The Most High revealed to Joshua who Achan was and Achan was brought before them and he confessed that he took the silver and the gold and he hid it under his tent in the earth and they were stoned for that because that cursed object wreaked havoc in the camp. They were sent in the camp and they weren't even able to win their battle. They were losing fights. You understand? Now the thing about Akan in Hebrew, it means trouble. You better be careful what you bring in your house. You better be careful. Because this stuff is real trouble. So I'm not going to go into a million scriptures. I'm going to tell you some to write down. Leviticus 19.31. Leviticus chapter 20. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Isaiah chapter 8, we will read that, okay? Now, the reason I'm doing this, I want to keep this video as short as possible because i got a lot of things to get into, things that's going to blow your mind, things that's been hidden in the darkness that I want you to see. So be patient and please go to the scriptures with me. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19, look at what it says. 
And when they, say, when they shall say to you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? You understand? So the word of God forbids necromancy. Now what is necromancy? It's talking to the dead. I want to show you something. You got to see how real this is now. Go to Revelation 21.8. We're going to be quick with this. And if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. Pause the video and then keep up with me. All right. So Revelation 21. Let's see what it says in verse 8. In Jesus' name. But the fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, and the what? Sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Saints, this is really going to happen. You want to stay as far away from this crowd as possible. You understand? 1 Timothy chapter 4. Come on. Real quick. 1 Timothy Chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, you see that it means the last days, we are in this latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You understand this means there are real spirits and real devils. What does Ephesians 6 talk about? We don't wrestle against what? Flesh and blood, but against what? principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places now i for one believe that this ouija board was really made by the occult and it does have power to open doorways you have to stay away from it now if you were a victim of it just like a lot of us when we were children we're going to do a very serious prayer at the end of this video and I want you to do the prayer with me. Okay? I'm going to reveal to you. See, the word of God says in Ephesians, we're to have nothing to do with the evils of darkness, but rather expose it. So this is what I'm doing here. It's too many fake YouTube channels that are just worried about views so they can get paid. We don't get paid by YouTube. If there's a commercial, it's because we got hit with a copyright hit. We are doing this to expose the darkness and warn you about it. Because you know Satan roams around as a lion seeking whom he may devour. The word of God says we should not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Now I am a watchman on the wall in this video warning you. Trying to help you to walk right, live right. To shine the light of Christ and expose the darkness. Now I'm going to reveal to you what has been brought out from the darkness. See, the reason why in this ministry, we encourage you to pray more, read more, fast more, and get closer to Christ is because the more you allow Christ to grow in you, the brighter he shines in your life, and the more things that are hidden in the darkness will be revealed. If you go into a dark room with a flashlight, wherever you aim that light, you can see what is hidden in the darkness. People wonder, how does the revelations of Jesus Christ get so many mysteries revealed about the word of God? And how do they know so many things and expose the enemy? It's simply that. We love Jesus Christ and we glorify him in this ministry. Therefore, he gives us an increase of the brightness of his light. Remember, it says he's coming back to destroy the Antichrist with what? The breath of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. We are a real ministry. And for all our partners, we love you so much. And we thank you for your prayers, support, and for being real in this gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, let's get to it. I told you this is going to shock you, but you need to know about it. Let's pray first before we go into this deep route. Let's pray first before we go down this path because it's not a game. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for all our beloved brothers and sisters around the earth that are watching this video, that you protect their minds. Wash them in the blood of the Lamb. Those that love you, Jesus. For any that are not saved, I pray they get saved. Lord, cover us under your wings that we can see this video and not fear, but more get aware and get ready for prayer. And cover us. And show us the things hidden in the darkness. 
In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Now, first off, the Ouija board is a very ancient thing. Okay? When it started to get popular in America, you got to realize something. The Ouija board, been popular. Now, we'll talk about this giant Ouija board. I'm going to show you the mystery on why they're doing this. Some of it is common knowledge, but a lot of this, I'm telling you, is deep. Deep in the darkness that had to be brought up and, and called out by the light of Christ to expose itself. That's what Jesus... Don't you realize that was going on? That, that is what was going on when our King, the Son of God, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, was roaming the earth. He would command demons that were deep in the darkness of men and women. He would command them to come out. Just like how cops chasing down somebody with the helicopter, they shine that light onto the tree and expose the man hiding. Jesus shines his light and exposes these evils. And we just happen to be servants of Christ to show you these things. Now listen, you notice on the screen I'm showing these old pictures of advertisements for the Ouija board. I'm going to show you some mysteries and principles. You're going to understand in the spirit realm, it's got a lot to do with rules and principles and laws. If the enemy can trick somebody, that's why the Bible says in Revelation 13 that the Antichrist causes all, both small and great. What is the word cause? If somebody forces you to fall on the ground. That's one thing. But if they cause you to fall, that means they just simply guided you to trip. You see the difference? So I want to show you something. Be careful. Because a lot of times the enemy has to tell you what it is. And if you buy it and accept it, he's allowed to put the spell. I want to show you something about the spirit world. A lot of times the devil has to get your permission. See, in a lot of movies in Hollyweird, they make it look like the devil uses brute force and holds you down. His first means of attack is to try to get you to accept and receive without any, without any resistance. That's his first wave of attack. By force is his last resort. Notice that the Ouija board says it holds you spellbound with its answers. Notice these old ads I got on the screen. Almost every single one of them have to let you know it holds you spellbound. See, in the spirit realm, when people read that, they're just like, oh, this is cool. But not knowing when they purchase this board or when they use it, Satan can get legal ground over them because he let them know they would be spellbound. Saints, you have to be careful. Stop running to every trend and everything. Because a lot of times, in between the lines is the answer. It's, it's what is really the intent of the enemy's device. So because he puts on that box, it is guaranteed to leave you spellbound. They make spellbound look like a household word, right? They make spellbound sound like, oh, it just means it's going to excite you. But is that honestly the definition of spellbound? What is the real definition of spellbound? Held by or as if by a spell. Synonyms are bewitched, charmed, enchant, entranced. So this is definitely not to just amaze somebody. The devil is letting everybody know before they use the Ouija board. That they will be bound by a spell, period. And once they play that, once they buy it, they're accepting that warning by default. Because he makes the warning, he bakes a warning in the oven but puts, you know, frosting on it. So it don't appear to be a warning. It appears to just be like, oh, spellbound, it's going to make you amazed. You see the difference? The other thing I want you to pay attention to is how it always would say, the other thing I want you to pay attention to, is how they have to label it, mystifying oracle. You see that? 
I'm revealing these things through the light of Christ, exposing this darkness so we can build up to why they've made the world's largest Ouija board in Salem, Massachusetts. And we'll get to that in a minute. What is the definition of oracle? According to Merriam-Webster's definition, it's a person such as a priestess of ancient Greece to whom a deity is believed to speak. A shrine in which a deity reveals hidden knowledge or divine purpose through such a person. You understand? But I want to go a little deeper though. According to the word of God, what is an oracle? In the Old Testament, used in every case except 2 Samuel 16, 23, to denote the most holy place in the temple. It means the word of God. A man inquired at the oracle of God by means of the Urim and Thummim in the breastplate of the high priest Ephod. And the New Testament is used only in plural and always denotes the word of God. You read Romans 3, 2, Hebrews 5. It talks about the oracles of God. The scriptures are called the living oracles. You see that? So then I started to meditate. I said, Lord, please show me the things hidden in the darkness that I can warn the people. And again, if you don't take this serious, I'd rather you just go. Because I'm talking to spiritual minded people that understand and know that the spirit world is real. And although we are on the real side, we are on the winning side. Jesus Christ already conquered Satan and all his powers on the cross when he died and rose from the dead. But the occult world is real. And this cursed object is biblical. We just read it in Joshua 7. And there is, and there's real bad things that happen to people that take the wrong things into their house, their town, their neighborhood, or their cities. So I started to meditate on this. And I said, Lord, why they're letting people know that it'll spellbound them. And they're also boasting that the Ouija board is a mystifying oracle. But if you represent, but Lord, if the true oracle is the word of God, that's when it hit me, saints. Are you ready for it? If you look at the Ouija board, it has numbers at the bottom. It has letters at the top, arched. The very old Ouija boards, that has many different types, and all of them can be burned in the fire like Acts 19. And that's exactly what we're doing now. We're burning this in the spirit realm, and we're going to burn it physically. If any of you have an Ouija board, we need to break it and burn it in Jesus' name, just like they did in the book of Acts. But I'm going to show you why they created this Ouija board, how they were directed to make it, And what the hidden meaning is, we're going to expose it right now. The word of God is how the Lord Jesus Christ speaks to us. You understand? The word, this Bible that you have, is the oracle of God. He speaks to us. Have you ever been studying the word? And you'll tell someone, hey, let me show you Deuteronomy 8. And boom, you'll open the Bible right up to Deuteronomy 8. How many, be real, how many times has that happened to y'all? It happens to my wife and I and saints that study with us almost all the time. I kid you not. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? You'll be, even when you're alone and you'll be studying, you'll be like, oh, I got to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And boom, you'll open right up. To that chapter. Do you know what the odds is. That that happens. A few times even in a month. I challenge you to get any type of book. And try to open up to an exact page. But what is that. That's because this scriptures that you have. This book. What is written in it is not from earth. It's from heaven. You understand. By holy men of God. The Holy Spirit would speak through and write. Just like how you could get into a car and drive. The Holy Spirit would would enter into humans that were living holy. And he would drive their hand onto a scroll. You understand? 
But this Ouija board is a mockery. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Notice that there's letters arched at the top and numbers straight across at the bottom in more of the original boards. Notice that there is a sun to the top left and a moon and a star to the top right. And the name Ouija is in the center at the top. The word of God is composed of words and numbers, is it not? Why do you think every chapter is linked to a number? Now we know the original scrolls were written like letters. But the Lord Jesus Christ ordained this blessed book that we have in our hands for a reason. He merged the numbers with the letters. And this Ouija board is a mockery to have the numbers and letters on the board. But let's go deeper with it. What does Ephesians 6 say? What does it say in Ephesians chapter 6? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. If you study the Greek, there is a word called cosma craters. That means they rule above. There are, there are ranks. You understand? You have foot soldiers, which are the demons. You have unclean spirits. You have what you call fallen angels and principalities and powers. And those beings are up in the heavens. You understand? But they're not allowed to go past a certain layer. We know that the Most High, Paul spoke about the third heaven, and we know that Satan himself was presenting himself to the Most High in the book of Job. But they're called the rulers of the darkness. In fact, Satan is called the prince of the powers of the air. That's why you see NASA or Nasha, some say it means to be lifted up, but Nasha means to deceive. And it was a play on words. But NASA knows about these fallen angels. They know they exist. Now, NASA knows these fallen angels exist. You understand? But they reside in what they call outer space is not really outer space. It's a part of the heavens. There's a certain level of heavens where fallen angels reside and also the holy angels travel through dimensions to get to us. Remember in Daniel, the angel of the Lord took 21 days. Why? Because there was a principality, a prince of Persia that fought him in the upper heavens trying to stop him from getting to Daniel. So let me show you the mystery on why the Ouija board is made the way it is. The, the moon to the right and the sun to the left represent the above, the heavens. Notice that the letters are curved like the curvature of the earth. Now, whether you flat earthers will call it a dome or whether y'all that don't believe in flat earth, let's not fight over that. Let's not lose focus of what I'm really trying to tell you, whether that represents the dome or whether it represents just simply the atmosphere above the earth. It's the circle, the curvature represents the earth. You understand? Above the earth is the sun and the moon. Notice Ouija is above the earth because this Ouija represents a principality. Some will try to debate on that. I don't care. Ouija, it's representing Satan. It's representing the fallen angels. You see? So if you look at the board, what you're really seeing is the alphabet. The letters are the curvature of the outer atmosphere of the earth and above the earth in the heavens is where these principalities reside. So really what this board is saying, hear this now, you're not going to find this online, is that when somebody messes with this cursed object, remember on the box it even tells you it'll leave you spellbound. What it's really saying is that it is a mystifying oracle which means it's in communication 
to gods. It's a mockery because the word of God is our oracle. It has numbers and letters. And we know that we communicate with Jesus Christ of Nazareth and talk to God the Father through him. Right? So this board is a dimensional doorway where it's calling itself an or it's lab it's called a oracle which means that those who speak to it get com get into communication with the false gods or the fallen angels because even though they're false doesn't mean they don't exist see you a lot of people get that confused fallen angels are worshiped as gods They've been worshipped as gods for many years. You look all around the world, they've been worshipped as gods. In Egypt, Babylon, the Anunnaki, right? The Nephilim, Genesis chapter 6. So that is the hidden mystery of the stupid, cursed Ouija board that needs to be burned. The letters represent the outer atmosphere of the earth and above it is the sun and the moon where the principalities are. And the board speaks to the principalities and powers operating through the demons who go into the houses. Wherever people use this, the demons have access to their house. Now, I'm not going to play a million videos of people being possessed in a historical t time lapse. I'm not going to do all of that. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. We're going to go one step deeper. Notice that the Ouija board, they say you must have two or more people to play it. You see the mockery once again, because the word of God says where two or where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, he is in the midst. Once again, you see the mockery. And I'm trying to show you this mystery. You're not going to find this online, saints. Those who dedicate themselves to the Most High, those who serve Christ, will get the hidden mysteries revealed to them about Christ, which are far greater, by the way. And shame on y'all that only click on videos like this, but you don't want to know the mysteries of Christ. There is something terrifying coming your way. It's called judgment. Because you're fascinated with the darkness, but you run from the light. You better go and click on those other videos where we talk about Jesus Christ, which is far greater than exposing this darkness. But this darkness needs to be exposed. You understand? You have to do both. Because some, there's some people out there, they got that coward spirit, that fearful spirit. And Revelation says the fearful and the unbelieving are the first two cast into the lake of fire. I had a man tell me, you shouldn't do videos exposing the darkness. Just stop making people afraid. No, brother, you need to repent from being a coward. Because we are commanded to do two things in the gospel. Shine the light of Christ and show people the gospel. And expose the darkness. We're commanded to do both. So that's what we do in this ministry. So now let's break this down one more time before I, sh before I show you the real reason why they had to make a giant Ouija board. This thing is huge, y'all. And we're going to get into how much it weighs and all of that in a minute. Notice one. And once again, we're going to recap. The mystery of this evil board is they're letting you know that when someone operates on this board, they're speaking to the principalities through a doorway above the atmosphere in the heavens. That's why the sun and the moon are at the top right and left of the board. You have the curvature of the numbers. You have the curvature of the letters, which represents the earth in the different atmospheres. You could consider the numbers, which represent the humans on the earth, right? Well, you, could, you could say the numbers represents the flat of the earth, right? Under the earth, it says goodbye because once somebody dies and goes to hell, it's too late. You see that? And there's other things too. There's witchcraft obviously involved. Witches love the moon and they worship the moon. And I'm not going to get into that. We're going deeper than that. When someone messes with this board, they go through a gateway in the spirit and they communicate through demons because this board warns people it's an oracle, which means it communicates with demon false gods, 
or you could say fallen angels and principalities and powers. And if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that's real, then you clearly don't believe Ephesians 6 is real. Because we are at war with fallen angels. But let's go one step deeper. I want you to see this video of a woman who was a high-ranking witch who gave her life to Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not telling you to follow her teachings. I don't know her doctrine. But I do know that she is exposing what she used to be. So I want you to see what she says about the Ouija board. Check this out. Um, of the occult. And if only people just knew half of what I know, um, they would never get involved with it. Um, take Halloween, for instance. Um, there's a kind of Halloween fever in the USA, but now it's here in England. And at Halloween night, the kids dress up as, as witches and with masks and robes and all sorts of stuff. And they go trick-or-treating, knocking at the door and saying, trick or treat, well, if you don't give them a, tr a treat like apples or sweets or some money or cakes, or, then you get a trick paid on, trick paid on you. But that, uh, it itself seems innocent enough. But imagine the devil laughing at Christians who actually have Halloween parties at their church or Halloween dances come to our Halloween dance. Can you imagine a witch going by and seeing that outside, which they have done? Even the churches are uh, messing about and playing around with um, occult things. Um, if you knew what I know, what goes on at Halloween, you would never celebrate Halloween again, Christian. Um, what do they do? Well, they choose a new queen in the order that I belong to at Halloween. And, and that's an awful ceremony. Um, they call up spirits um, to go through the earth and to revenge, have their revenge on their enemies. And there's a lot of secret activity in the demonic realm going on at Halloween. And Christians, instead of celebrating Halloween, you should be praising the Lord and warning people about the dangers of Halloween. Um, it's, it's a witch's celebration, not a Christian celebration. So I warn about that. Don't let your children get mixed up in it. Oh, but they get mixed up in it at school. The other kids are doing it. Put something else on for them. Something Christian. And so that right from the start, you know, people know uh, what it's all about. I've been there and I know what it's like. And I've had to counsel people today. I have a counselling ministry, a specialist ministry in counselling people who have been in or have been dabbling in, either deeply or just dabbling in, uh, Ouija boards and witchcraft and all kinds of stuff, spiritism and all kinds of stuff, horoscopes and I've had to counsel them. And I counsel the casualties of witchcraft. I counsel the casualties of the Ouija boards. Um, one young lad, was at a meeting one night when I was speaking and I warned about the Ouija board and he went home and he tried to burn his Ouija board and it wouldn't burn. It just wouldn't burn. And he was bouncing up and down, up and down like a rubber ball and he could not stop. And I was called to the house and um, I was told about it. And in the name of Jesus, I commanded this evil spirit to go were several in fact and that boy was wonderfully delivered and I've had to counsel many who have played around with Ouija boards or fortune telling or walk charming or walk to divining or it's all forbidden in God's word if only people would read God's word there it's written plainly thou shalt not do these things why because God is a, 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 a cruel forbidding God you know 
uh, they were a great big stick making all his commandments, uh, uh, saying, you must not do this, you must not do that. No, he does it because he loves us. He says, thou shalt not do this because he wants the best for the creation that he made. He wants the best for you and he wants the best for me. So in love, he says, thou shalt not do these things. And um, if people just read the Bible instead of reading other sorts of rubbish and read what God's word said about witchcraft and Satanism and the occult and every, any other error, Turn to God's Word and see what God's Word says about it. It's forbidden by God. Oh, well, I'm glad that I changed over masters and became a Christian. I'm glad that Jesus Christ changed my life and set me free from Satanism and witchcraft and all the hell and misery that goes with it. It's easier to get in than it is to get out. There's only one way out. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And I found Christ as my saviour. He's the way out. He's the only one who can save and deliver and set free. And what he's done for me, he can do for you. He can do for anyone. There's nothing impossible for him. You see how real it is? I remember as a child being a victim of the Ouija board. My dad didn't know better. Bible says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Notice the Parker Brothers logo is a hypnotized symbol. Look at what the Ouija board age limit was. Ages 8 to adult. Can you imagine that? These wicked people. But let's talk about this. There's one more thing I want to tell you. Look at these old, old, old advertisements for the Ouija board. You notice they kept coming out with new games with different names. You see that? Right? It says new game, Gardez, and we bind that name in Jesus' name. But they will come out with multiple different names. I believe were demon names. Okay? So going through everything, they have worked day and night to create this giant Ouija board to get it prepared for Halloween. We know that many children are coming up missing on Facebook and you got to pay attention to that and make sure you're praying for them. We know there's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of wickedness and I'm warning you, you, you are part of this stuff? You celebrate Halloween? I'm telling you, you provoking God to anger in your life. But I'm going to show you why they're doing this. In the video... Of the man who created this Ouija board. And he's a high ranking Satanist. See a lot of y'all don't realize Satanists don't just come off and be like yo I'm a high ranking Satanist. Some of them be looking like nice people. Satan himself comes disguised as an angel of light. Right? And it says unleashing the Ouija Zilla. The world's largest Ouija board. To the point Ripley's believe it or not. Is coming to pay pay them a visit. You see? But I want to show you something. This in the constructed of 99 individual sheets of plywood, clocking in at approximately 9,000 pounds, measuring over 3,000 square feet. You see that? But why would they want to do this? Was it just a publicity stunt? Or are they seriously trying to do something here? Why is it they merged the name Ouija Zilla from Godzilla? Because when you think of Godzilla, what do you think of, saints? Come on, man. You got to look in the spirit. The Bible says, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have spiritual ears? Do you have spiritual eyes? What does Genesis chapter 6 talk about? That's right. The Nephilim. The, the giants, right? And we know that they really existed. And we know that's one of the biggest cover-ups. Remember, Satan is called the god of this world in, in Corinthians. He's the one who covers up things. He works day and night to try to keep people deceived to the truth of the word of God. But I want to show you 
The reason they're doing this, and you got to realize something, Salem, Massachusetts is no joke. That place is really bound by witchcraft. And for all our partners and our brothers and sisters in Massachusetts, we love y'all. We praying for y'all. Stand firm, saints. But let me show you why they're doing this and what they're really saying. Because listen, on that board, they have a quote that says, size does matter. It also says Salem Witch Board. The reason why they integrated Zilla into it is because they're letting you know their hope and their plan is to operate a giant Ouija board to bring up demons because what they want to do instead of just dealing with unclean spirits and demons, they want to conjure up the Nephilim. Do you remember in the word of God in Samuel 28? Check this out. 1 Samuel chapter 28. I'm just going to read it real quick. Look at what it says in Jesus' name. Verse 3. Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah. Even his own city and Saul had put away those that have familiar spirits. You see that? And the wizards out of the land. These are people that communicated with demons and with the dead. Which is forbidden by the Most High God. Right? Go to verse 5. And when Saul saw that the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. And his heart was greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Neither by dream, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. You see that? Notice the word Urim. Now we're starting to get into the oracles and how God would communicate by the word of God. Listen to this. Then said Saul unto his servants, seek me a woman that had a what? Familiar spirit. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And if you've never seen our sermon called The Witch of Endor, you need to go watch that on our YouTube channel. As well as The Secret Language of Witches. Now listen to this. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and put two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, pray thee, divine unto me the familiar spirit and bring me him up. Whom I shall name to thee. Notice when people play with the Ouija board. They want to talk to some family member. They ask the Ouija board or the oracle. That demonic oracle. Right? Because the real oracle is the word of God. Right? But these people claim this Ouija board as a oracle. But we know it as a demonic oracle. Notice people will use this board or this demon oracle. To go and conjure up a spirit of a lost mother or of a dead mother or a father or a brother or a friend. Same thing Saul is doing. You see this? Watch this. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord live, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Notice when people talk to the Ouija board, they request, I want to talk to my grandmother. Bring her up for me. You see the difference? You see, you see the comparison? Now watch this. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. What did you see? The woman said to Saul, I saw what? Gods ascending out of the earth. You see that? And of course, we know that Samuel, some say that wasn't him, but it really was. Samuel rebuked Saul. But this lets you know biblically these powers are real. And if you think that woman just simply lifted up her hands and started to pray to demons, come on, man. She did a ritual. She used cursed occult-like objects to conjure up and open up a gate. But she happened to see some other things in the spirit. This is no joke, saints. 
what they're doing in Salem, Massachusetts. And, and another thing you need to realize that I'm seeing in the spirit is the reason this has to happen in Salem, Massachusetts is because Massachusetts is called, if you look at a license plate, the spirit of America. Things have to start there first most times. Massachusetts is where homosexuality, where uh, gay marriage was started. You see, because it's the spirit of America. That's where so-called Columbus landed, right? Plymouth Rock, right? They brought that spirit to Massachusetts. So what they're really saying is they got the Godzilla on there because they want to conjure up the giants. They want to go bigger. They want greater principalities to come up. They want to communicate with big demons and open up a open up a gate now. Now, this ain't on no type of level with CERN and the Hadra Collider that's being built in China and in other places. But this is still something, saints, that we need to pray against, especially for our beloved saints up in Massachusetts. You should be in prayer right now. You should be fasting. You should be reading your word. Binding up the powers of darkness Doesn't the word of God tell you You got power when you serve Christ Jannies and Jambres The witchcraft workers Had no power to overcome Moses Where is your faith sister Where is your faith brother Why are you not a warrior in Christ So I wanted to reveal to you Why they're doing this Look at how bold these witchcraft workers have become. Look at how engulfed America is in witchcraft and Satanism and Harry Potter and sorcery and spellbounding things. Look at this. Look at this. And you look how pathetic all these so-called ministries across the country are. No power. Not even believing in the power anymore. Living in sin. Putting on a show every Sunday. Well, we ain't doing that over here. And could you imagine? They even came out with a Ouija board for lukewarm Christians. Where they think they're talking to angels. But here's the irony of it. They really are. They're talking to fallen angels and they don't even know it. So saints of God, you've been warned. But I want to show you this picture that's in the article in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Notice how many people are standing around the Ouija board piece that is used to operate over the letters and numbers. How many people are there? Twelve. Once again, another mockery of the twelve disciples. You see, the twelve disciples walked with the true oracle, which is Jesus Christ, the word of God. He's how we communicate with the most high God. He is our high, wow. He is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We open up the scriptures. There's letters and numbers. We go through the word of God, which is Jesus Christ to pass through the earth into the heavens to communicate with God, the father. So what they have done with the Ouija board for over a hundred years and the Ouija board, these things go way back. They're very ancient. Is they use these occult curse objects as a false oracle, as a demonic oracle to communicate with the fallen angels and principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world in the heavenly places. That's what the word of God says. So once again, 12 around this, 12 around that that piece to mock. But I ain't seen nobody talk about it. So right now we're going to pray. We're going to pray against the powers of darkness going on in Halloween. We're going to pray against the powers in this Ouija board. We're gonna, I'm going to lead you to a prayer to repent. If you've ever dabbled in the Ouija board. Or if it was ever operated in your home. We're going to do an, a prayer. I just want to be led by God right now. So I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God, I declare that you are my only oracle. You are the only way through the heavens to speak to my heavenly father. Jesus, I repent of all sins, known and unknown. I repent and I renounce all of the occult. 
if I've ever used the Ouija board. I repent and I renounce the Ouija board as my oracle. I break the spell that had me bound. I shut and close any demonic portals that were opened up in my life or my family's life through the occult or through the Ouija board or anything like it. I shut it because Jesus, you have the keys to shut and lock any door that none can open and you can open a door that none can shut. And I close every occult portal that's been opened up in my life and in my family's life. Lord Jesus Christ, we bind the powers of darkness that are operating through this evil time of Halloween. We close every single portal being opened up through human sacrifice. We close the portal in the name of Jesus Christ. We shut the doors of darkness where demons and principalities come through because of human sacrifice. We shut it in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are Lord. And according to your word, we have power over the, over the enemy. We want to pray for all the children. Oh, God. All the children that have been kidnapped. All the women and men that have been taken. That are being prepared to be sacrificed. That they are preparing to sacrifice. That God, you would get them out of that situation, Lord. Expose these wicked workers. Expose these wicked people, Lord Jesus Christ. If there's a way, Lord, deliver those children. Deliver those men and women. But Father God, we pray they know you, Lord. Send angels to fight for them. And break the powers of darkness of the people operating against them. And Lord, we come against this giant Ouija board in Salem, Massachusetts. Come on, saints. Pray with me here. We bind the powers of darkness through this giant Ouija board that's been cursed, that's been hexed. We declare that no portal will open. We declare that no gates will open for the Nephilim to come through. We bind it and we shut it in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare a revival in Massachusetts, a revival in Salem, Mass, that saints of God will pray and bind and break the witchcraft powers everywhere in their city, community, and state, and in the country. Father God, I pray that Rick, this witchcraft worker, will get saved before it's too late. I pray that as many Satanists and witchcraft workers will come to know you as Lord, just like they did in the book of Acts, chapter 8, chapter 19, where they repented and they burned their witchcraft books. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray you convict the hearts of these lukewarm Christians, these so-called Christians that say they love you and follow you, but then they practice things that are wicked and an abomination in your eyes. Convict their hearts to repent and put down the wicked thing. And I break the spell of anybody that's used the Ouija board. I break every power of darkness. I bind every demon that's been assigned them through sorcery and through the occult, through Ouija boards, tarot cards. I bind that spirit that has been attacking anyone that has repented in this prayer, that has turned away from evil and is serving Christ. I command you demons by the sound of Jesus Christ and my voice to leave this person, leave that man, leave that woman, leave that family, leave that house and do not come back. You are illegally trespassing. The blood of Jesus Christ is greater than their sinful acts in the occult that they did. The minute they repent, the door is shut in Jesus Christ's name. Father, send angels, Lord, to everybody hearing this that loves you, to everybody hearing this that wants you to fight on their behalf, just as you sent angels to Daniel, and they broke through. It may have took some time, but they broke through. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you so much. For revealing these things that are hidden in the darkness. To expose Satan by shining the light of Jesus Christ. Amen.
We love y'all so much. And we thank you for just all your prayers and support for y'all that have became partners and got in the fight with us. We love you so much. Your prayers are so important right now for us. Because the more we expose, the more the enemy gets angry and God raises up a standard against him. But we trust that you're praying for us. You need to be praying for us. So now you know why they put size does matter on that Ouija board. Because they want to bring up giants. You understand? But it lets you know they keep trying and trying. Just like the Hadron Collider being built over in China. Saints, things are going to happen, I'm telling you. Revelation talks about creatures coming out of the abyss that sting men to the point they want to die but can't. You think that's some kind of allegory? You think Genesis 6 wasn't really giants? But yet all around the earth, you see hieroglyphics and carvings and walls and Babylon and uh, the Anunnaki and all the Cambodia and South America and the Mayans and all of these. You think they were all making up the same story in the same time? You better wake up. You better know that this word that you hold in your hands, you need to cherish it because we got the real oracle. Not no stupid curse board like the man Achan who means trouble in Joshua 6. He had a curse object. That stupid Ouija board. And finally say this with me saying, say I bind the Ouija name. I bind every demon name and I render it powerless in Jesus Christ's name. Make sure you say that. But don't miss what I'm saying. We have the real oracle. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is the living word. And we have the book, which most call the Bible or the scriptures. It's the oracle, words and numbers together, written down on paper. But in the supernatural realm, we go through the word, through Jesus Christ, into the heavens, to God the Father. And that was the mystery they were mocking. Because their stupid Ouija board is words and numbers that go through the board into the heavens to touch these fallen angels who they call as gods but when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that the Son of God is Lord to the glory of God the Father we love you all bless Lord give us your heart for America and I want to tell you it's a broken heart it's a heart that's deeply, deeply grieved. He says it, he said, what more could I have done for that nation than I have done? And see how they've responded. Home where they made the crack in the base The reason Jay got the gas